Good morning, good afternoon and good evening and thanks for stopping by. Our dedicated team will guide you through with the latest updates and theories at Starbase Texas. the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for future streams. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Starbase friends around the world. Astro Joe here for RGB Aerial Photography, Starbase Weekly, episode 113. Welcome to a great show. We've got a bunch of great pictures from 10,500 yesterday. I'll send it on over to your host this week, Stephanie. G'day from Australia. I'm Stephanie B. And welcome to the episode, the live stream. Uh, we've got a couple of good uh, guest commentators with us today. I'll start with uh, Jeff. I'll start with Jake. Hey again, everyone. It's good to be back. Um, and this week we've got another awesome lot of new photos um and we can see there's some pretty big changes from last week and we got pretty exciting new development of the launch site as well which we'll get to near the end of the stream and uh with that i'll pass it over to nate hey everybody it's good to be back i haven't been able to to be a part in a while and so it's great to be uh on the stream today as jake just said lots of changes uh, all over the place this week so uh exciting episode i'll throw it back to stephanie Okay, let's start with uh, Macy's, as we always do. Okay, we're well, at Macy's. We'll go over to the Flame Trench area and start over there. We can see a lot more excavation work. I suppose the big thing this week is we've seen the installation of the deluge, water deluge plumbing going in here. Yeah, that was a... Uh... That was definitely what something that caught us by surprise, the way that they wrote in the deluge pipe work to the flame bucket. I think uh, most of us didn't think they were just going to go straight underneath the floor of the trench like that, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. I really thought they'd come along the edge somehow, and so, yeah, that was a bit surprising, but it, it does make sense. Well, yeah, otherwise the plumbing would be quite exposed to the flames, you would think so. And I guess on top of this, it looks like we're going to have some more concrete. You can see in this photo here, we should get concrete. And uh, there are the end beds, so I'm pretty sure they're notches perhaps in the concrete to as a yeah. keyway for the concrete flooring. Yeah, I was just about to say those are negative spaces in the wall of the trench. And basically when they go to pour the concrete for the floor, the concrete will then go into those little notched areas and then that will basically help keep floor of the trench structurally sound. Okay, and then and, um, oh, go on. I say, and if, yeah, if you zoom in again in the trench, Stephanie, you can, yeah, you can see just how high the floor of the trench will come as well because if you look at the end of the trench, that concrete beam going across, yeah, it'll come to the top of that. So it's going to be pretty substantial flow in this trench. I guess they're learning lessons from IFT one. Uh, um, sorry, with flight one with the acoustic energy and concrete, they need to really make sure they control that energy going yeah. through the concrete. Yeah, I mean they've got they obviously use flame trenches at McGregor the test site, um, and they do have the. I think the biggest flame trench they got there is this one for the Falcon 9 first stage testing. Um, so they'll have learned, they, yeah, they've got lessons learned from this trench as well that they're using for the new trench at Massey's. Um, and I guess they're just scaling things up a bit for Starship because obviously it's going to be quite a bit more powerful, especially when they start getting into the, uh, the nine engine ships. So you sort of assume that this is um okay to use with the nine nine engines as well you think it'd be forward compatible yeah i mean nine engines is probably a long way off um but 
I think with there's a lot of things um, across you know the various sites for uh, SpaceX sites. They do seem to take into account future vehicles and future engines. Um, there's like the steel player underneath the OLM at the launch site in Sarbis. Um, that's likely already been tested to a higher thrust. It's it's gone up against a higher thrust than what it experiences now, basically. So that, yeah, I'd like to think they've thought ahead of time with that, and it'll probably be the same with this trench as well. They'll obviously be accounting for higher thrust engines, which will come at some point. So they're staging a few items nearby. The actual bucket over here, and some more parts associated with it over here. Now, we saw those parts last week. Maybe yeah, so everyone, and, oh, go on. Yeah, as I say, anyone wondering what those brackets are up in the right hand corner of masses, those would be for they make up the back section of the cradle for the back of the flame bucket to rest against. Um, and yeah, as you were just pointed out, we got the so yeah, that's it. In that area is where those back pieces would go. Um, and yeah, and you were pointing out just now, they got the flame bucket cradle base right next to the trench. And it's possible that's actually now been lifted into the trench. Because um, I think it was about 8.35 a.m. earlier today. One of the cameras pointing towards Marcy's. Um, there was a tandem lift or something over there and it looked to be right near the trench. So it's possible that base has already actually gone in as of this morning. That'd be kind of tricky getting in underneath there. And we've got some more pieces staged here, which were those, um, these pieces down here. Definitely a lot of pieces to kind of shuffle into that area. It would be uh, it would really be cool if we had cameras that could really see that process taking place. And yeah, and I think, and I think regardless of which way that cradle base went into the trench, if it went down through the opening where the ship was set or through the other end of it, it would have to slide up the trench at some point, I think, um, because it's it's got to go down, slide forward, and then you're going to have to lift down the back pieces of the cradle. To be... So it goes quite, it's underneath the, beam, underneath the concrete yeah. floor. Yeah. So there's other pieces of pipe around that, like this one here is, there's a large and a small pipe. There's the small pipe in the trench. So that piece over there is mirroring this piece to come down into the trench and around the corner. And I think we can see the corner piece for that over here. Yep, I'd say that's probably it. Um, and of course we can see Pipework already in the trench as well, reaching quite far down towards the end. Um, some of that pipework should go to the very bottom of the trench and then come up behind the flame bucket, and possibly it'll spray out near the opening where the ship will be sitting. Because um, what we have seen with the flame bucket sections, on the very tops of each section, there is actually little outlets that are capped at the moment. So it's possible, yeah, because we, we get pipe work coming right down to the bottom of the trench and up the back of it and then to those, whatever connects to the, those outlets to the tops of the uh, top of the flame bucket. Uh, we'll continue slowly with the water deluge system. Uh, we've got one of our Patreon members. Let's just dive in a little bit of crow material here. So this is one speculation. And so we have liquid nitrogen and a liquid nitrogen pump and a heat exchange manifest, heat exchange system here. So we're calling these heat exchanges. And that'll produce uh, through, so liquid nitrogen through the heat exchanges. Water goes through the heat exchange to cool it. And then high pressure nitrogen goes into the tanks to force the water out into the trench. That's care of our, one of our Patreon members, AH. And he promises he'll let Crow if that's wrong. <laughs> and yeah, that's quite different to the uh, the system we see at the launch site. Obviously, at the launch site, it's just 
the stacks of the high pressure uh, nitrogen gas cylinders they get charged from with nitrogen from the orbital tank farm and then they dispense from those tank the, the the high pressure gas cylinders into the water tanks and then obviously that mixture then goes out through the flame deflector plate underneath the olm um, but obviously with this if obviously this theory is true it'll be yeah like i said quite different from how they do it at the launch site Okay, is that better with my audio? All right, let's go back to one of these views. <coughs> so, Deluge Farm, Flame Trench Tank Farm here. So, we can see a bit more plumbing going on here with the connection of the locks and nitrogen lines over here, and some more uh, pipe racks here ready for the QD system. So I'll have liquid, oxygen, liquid nitrogen, high pressure nitrogen, and some methane over the back. And yeah, I'm pretty much eating crow in that one as well, because uh, where those new pipe stands are now, I, I thought they'd leave that area clear for lifting parts into the trench, but uh, I guess that wasn't going to be the case. That's okay. Me too, because um, I thought this was grade. I thought this level was the same level as over here, and and they wasn't going to need to be a retainer wall here. It looks like they're going to need another retainer wall here by the look of it. Yeah, it surprised me how they constructed that there, because I thought they would do both the retaining walls first and then fill it all in, but yeah, that didn't turn out to be the case, or were you? No, that'd be the smart way to do things, wouldn't it? Do you think? <laughs> There's a smart That's way, true. and there's the SpaceX way. You read my mind right there. So while we're on the flame trench, uh, I'll just find a better shot. We can see the SQD system is coming together. Uh, the, yeah, the quick disconnect is coming together nicely here. We can actually see the quick disconnect and the plumbing associated with it and we have these stands here it's going to stand on so it's going to be quite tall but it does need to be by the time you take in account the height of that stand the height of the stand as well as uh, the ship on top with the quick disconnect up higher up here somewhere that QED is going to need to be quite tall on this one Well, we're here. And, um, I'm going. And I was going to say about the QD uh, framework. I think it was about half hour ago it was actually spotted being lifted up in the air. So it is now possibly up on top of those legs ahead of installation over the trench. Nice. A few things getting ready to paint. We haven't seen the outside walkway yet. And the Big beams on the bottom here have been installed from last week. Well, they were installed last week. Now, did we see clamps on top of this or not? I couldn't remember. I couldn't work out whether you decided whether there's clamps on there or not. The the pieces that hold the clamps are definitely there. It's hard to tell if the actual individual clamps are present, but the uh, the little I don't know exactly what you'd call those pieces, but the the pieces the clamps mount to themselves are in place. So no, what you're actually seeing there is, um, so you get normally the six clamp units will be on top of the stand, but then between the clamps, you get little curved sections. Um, and those are for the skirt of the ship to rest on. Yes. There we go. Thanks, Jake. Very good. Yeah. I should imagine it won't be long until the actual clamps turn up. Um, I should imagine again quite close to installing those. So we can just while we're on the flame trench stuff as well, there's a rebar being laid into this platform, which we expect to have full of concrete, which we expect to go on top of the trench in this area here to slide backwards and forwards so we can they can roll the SPMTs over or do some maintenance on the engines. 
And um, yeah, that was the interesting thing noticed last during last night's show and tell with the platform where they're putting the rebar on. On two sides of it, it seems to be thicker rebar. And the working theory for that, I think, is that's possibly where the SPMTs will be driving over. So it's just slightly more reinforced on those sides. That sounds correct. Now we've got our LOX lines hooked up over this area as well. And just for a change, more concrete. This is going to look really nice. So now our concrete is a lot uh, more a lot more concrete than dirt these days. There's only actually quite a sm uh, small area left to be concreted. Okay, flame trench. Well, we're over here. The flame stack has its top taken off. I guess that's in preparation to start working. Okay, moving on. This area is getting less populated as they're moving stuff over towards the flame trench. So we've still got this one section to get move. And still a few stairway sections. Uh, I think we have one in transit, even one of those sections. Uh, no, in, uh, in another photo, this crane is halfway over there. There he is. He's on the move. So at the time of the play, as we go through these photos, this piece has moved slowly from over there, slowly moves around over to here. Uh, they finally put in a fifth LOX pump over here, which is good to see. I think that pretty well wraps up the flame trench area, Macy's. There's plenty of work going on here, there and everywhere. Okay, we'll go down to this new test stand area. So yeah, this is go on. So yeah, I say, so this area, well, this construction going on down here for anyone that hasn't seen yet, um, this is the speculated redesigned can crusher system that possibly features um the cage testing as well. Um and it's yeah, slowly coming together. There's I think there's still a lot of pieces missing from this system um, that hopefully we'll see turning up over the next few weeks or so. Um, but yeah, that outer ring section, that's coming along nicely. Yep, so it's just got one more leg. I don't know if we saw that one leg. It might still be on its way. The curved sections are here. So we're expecting to see still a ring section built here, which looks like it matches this top ring diameter here and yeah. this ring here hasn't had any more sections this week i think and it looks like the section down here what the actual booster will sit on or actually whatever the test article is i'm assuming it's booster related but maybe not i've painted these little mounts down here and they paint yeah, so with oh, go on so, so yeah, so with this test structure, it could be it could be booster or ship related test tanks, because um, obviously the outer twenty pistons that would be mounted to that other ring you were looking at just now, obviously they're used just for pulling the cap down on whichever test article they're testing at the time. Yep, I've always assumed because it's multiples of ten, it was per booster. But you're correct; it could easily be a ship section as well. I mean, the ship section's the same. Diamond, obviously, so it could very easy fit any sort of sections in here from except a nose cone. I guess they'll you still use the nose cone jail to actually test a nose cone, possibly. Although we still don't really know what else to come for that other test structure, so it, it may feature hardware that could test the nose cones. It's, um, yeah, we just don't know for sure yet until we see a few more parts turning up. I'm painting the cap here, which is good to see. I think that's an undercoat grade to get rid of all the rust, ready for to be painted 
black, I guess. Painted black. Everything's getting painted black down here. So, yeah. So, obviously, the fact that they're painting that pretty much suggests that they're, I'd say, done modifying it. Um, and you can, yeah, if you zoom in on that, actually, that cap, you can actually see some of the modifications, which include eyelets along the top of it. So, yeah, they'd be used for twisting whichever test article they're testing at the time. Um, and then in some places around the, the bottom ring of it, there's new clevises sticking out a bit further. And I think it was BJ, I think he was mentioning that they may be used to connect something a bit more substantial between this cap and the base of the test structure. So possibly you could see pistons going from the bottom of the test structure to the top of this cap, as opposed to the straps that they used to use. That were a bit more flexible. I heard someone speculate maybe they'll hinge this like on top, like an opening, so they don't have to remove it. But that's a bit far fetched. That'd be a pretty substantial piece of kit to do that. I'd reckon. Although, although I guess you know anything's possible with uh, when it comes to SpaceX. So yeah, you never know. We might actually see that, or we might not. And they're starting to run the cryogens again, or at least one pipe along here. So we're going to expect to see some tank farm commodities get used in this area as well, I would say. I'll have a quick look down here to see if we've got power coming in yet. I don't th they seem to be working on getting the power in here in this area, but I haven't actually seen power. We know the power cables have been run. So I expect to see power hooked up in the very near future. And that's the other thing I want to mention as well. Now that they've moved most of the flame uh, bucket parts from where they were for a long time, we may finally see the second tank turn up as well and go next to the uh, new one over in that area. So yeah. I think that's the main reason why you haven't seen a second tank yet for a while is just because there just hasn't been space for it. And uh, now they should be able to clear that whole area, ready for the second tank. Would that be the tank at the port? Is there another tank at the port already there for it? Um, no, I don't think we've seen yeah. the second one of these tanks turn up yet. There, There is various other tanks at the port. Um, two of them are ones that were sent from Sanchez over to that area. And then there was the two LNG tanks that turned up a while ago, but they may not be related to SpaceX at all. Okay, Joe, any questions and donations, please, for Macy's? Lots, indeed. I want to thank John Depker for gifting five memberships, as well as Flipper79, Flip Diaz. Hey, what's up, Philip? Thanks for gifting a membership. And Zero Fox as well, thanks for that gifted membership. Jake Winlow, gifting five. We've got some PayPal donations from PIMS. Starbase flower, Flyover, thanks for the good work. Keep it up, $18 donation as well as Liam with a $5 PayPal donation. Thank you very much. And then Tank Watcher Vince joins as a RGV flight supporter. Then we got some amazing support from Seabreeze. Thank you for your $100 super chat. That is just incredible support. We appreciate you. Says thanks Mauricio and Irma and the rest of the team for providing us with amazing shows. That's truth. Uh, let's see. David Albin has a question. What are they going to do with Marvin the Crane when they move everything to Massey's? Um, well, there's obviously the second orbital pad to, that's going to start being constructed sometime this year. And I should imagine that crane will be able to assist with construction of that pad. Yep. So, yeah, it'll stay put at the launch site. Yeah. You have a, a crane that'll be used for. Yeah, no, nothing else that'll be used for maintenance at times. There's a lot of high places that you need to, to reach, and it'll it'll yeah. stay around. And yeah, with the working theory that the ships being tested, the static fire tested at Marcy's, they should, it's looking like they'll be able to just roll into place over the, the, the trench, so they shouldn't need a crane for that. And then you've got the, um, the new structural test site area as well, down at the bottom of the Marcy's. Looks like that crane that's right next to it they'll be used for that so yeah so there's no reason to bring the uh marvin the crane over here if that's what you were wondering at all all right awesome 
want to thank Demars for gifting five memberships just a moment ago. Thank you very much for that support. Question from KMS. Shouldn't they put some pylons under the trench? Pylons under the trench. Oh, um, some piles down deep in the ground. Um, well, they have stabilised this to quite a depth with that sta soil stabilisation, so possibly won't need it. I think uh, we remember from Flight 1 how the vibrations under the concrete, perhaps they're meaning that, but I think the vibrations are going to be taken care of directly under the flames here with the actual flame buckets, so they may not need it because all this is stabilised under here and there's some fairly big Rio and concrete underneath already underneath here. We haven't actually seen it poured, but we did notice a lack of rebar in this area here that we suspect is for the concrete floor underneath here. So possibly not. Yeah, I would assume that with the concrete and rebar and the way they tie that, that flame trench together, almost like a box, it's going to be pretty substantial on its own. Agreed. All right, uh, question from Whiteford. Will the ship's static fire platform be filled with concrete? Yeah, we're uh, yeah we're expecting that to happen at some point. I mean, obviously that metal sheet and you see in the... Uh, oh, do you, oh, that... Um, oh, so if you mean the actual stand, then no, that's all been comp completely welded, um, completely enclosed now. Although there was... A little period of time where the tops of the legs were open but we can't really confirm if anything ever actually got poured in during that time before those uh before they capped the tops of the legs i mean it's not impossible that they only need to put a hole a small hole to put concrete but at this stage it doesn't look like it i mean yeah the one thing i'm not seeing with that stand is concrete spill out of any areas you know, that's normally the sure sign that something's been filled with concrete is if you see bits of concrete just spilling over places. So, I yeah, I think those legs are probably still empty. Yeah, I'm sure they're empty. I don't, I don't particularly under, know of a structural reason you'd want to fill them with concrete. So, I think the um, yeah, I think the working theory for that is that it was just just to add a bit more ballast when they were transporting the ship. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case this time, though. And on a very related note, Andy Alder asking, is the ship test stand also a transport stand? We think so. Yeah, it, it is looking that way. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, you've got those cross bracing at the bottoms of the legs. Now, that's that highly suggests to me that that's for putting SPMTs underneath. Um, Plus, you've got the big ramp now going up to that flame trench, which I don't think you'd need if any of the uh, if that's if that stand was a permanent feature above the trench. So yeah, to answer the question, we do think that's going to be a transportable thing. Yeah, you'd think if it was using a crane, the SPMT would probably come up beside beside the trench and the crane lift it over. And yeah, like you said, because they've got this massive ramp, it does suggest that they're going to transport with the with the stand up onto there. All right. The last question I've got here is from ALL. Uh, are there any type of rain drains in Massey's? Yeah, they've got drainage in quite a few areas. Um, if you look around the edge of the site, you will see where it's uh, where it exits from the various areas amongst the site. Um, There's one think, just here somewhere. Yeah, if you look behind the QD stand, I think there might maybe one by there. Possibly. Um, and then more to the left as well. There's about three, uh, no, four or five, I think, around the edge of this site. We come across them every now and again, of course. I won't be able to find one right now. But, yeah, there's there's some outlets all the way around uh, the place. Yeah, it's quite hard to spot them when you've got greenery growing over the outlets. And uh, God knows how much machinery and equipment over the inlets within the middle of the site. 
But yeah, there is drainage. Okay, is that all the questions, Joe? Yeah, yeah. Jim Cavett just came in, uh, I think, right before we started to answer that question. Uh, have you talked about water drainage from the flame trench, like where and how it will happen? Uh, probably a sump pump. We did see a sump pump in there. It may still be there. This line here, I think, was a sump pump at one stage. Um, they might be talking about during testing where... I'm not sure about during testing where any leftover water would go. We haven't seen any obvious signs yet. Um, though, in theory, there shouldn't really be much left of water left over after a tester. There's a fair amount of sump here. I guess it'll be the same at uh, other places, although this one's open. No, this has a trench too, doesn't it? It slopes up to the ground. So yeah. much the same as what happens here would be happening. It's not an old technology, this flame trench thing. Yeah, there's probably a pump system in place. Well, they may not put it in place yet, but it it could be a later date. Um, we might see that system or we might not. Okay, with that, we'll just move over to this storage site. Uh, there's not a lot changed here. We did see those two tanks move. I think we saw them last week or two ago. Otherwise, it's much the same. Uh, of course, there's a ton, still a whole lot of uh, cribbing for the crane there. Cribbing, is that the right word? And they're slowly using up commodities. We've got a picture of the new houses going up. They're coming along nicely. And last but not least, the new shopping centre development has got a whole ton of dirt being added. So once again, this had that vertical wick system. So now they're adding soil on top to help with the hydraulic extraction of water. And I guess that may even be the final grade. I mean, they'd want this built up a little bit for flood mitigation. So that's coming along nicely as well. And with that, we'll go over to Sanchez. Okay, starting up at the GC building, there's obviously a big item missing from the GC building. And we saw over the last, yesterday, this hydraulic actuator, which we've been saying, that's another piece of crow I need to eat. I've been saying it's for the quick disconnect arm the ship quick disconnect arm and it's not it's been used for the chopsticks obviously I mean yeah it wasn't a bad theory it's uh because obviously the one already on the tower there's not much to it um I mean not far off but it still got added to something that was attached to the tower so yeah you weren't too far off with it Okay, the, and also we saw a heap of the clamps getting removed. I mean, the linkages getting removed from the t tower. And here they are sitting over here. At least some of them. They're not all here. There's only 13 here. Yeah, so the, I think the working theory with those at the moment is they've removed all of the old ones from the launch ring, possibly to do some maintenance on the bearings. I think that may be one of the big parts they wanted to work on. Um, and rather than trying to work on the linkages, whilst they're still there installed in the launch ring, it was just easier just to completely remove them, bring them over to Sanchez, and then just replace them with new ones for the time being. So you'll probably see these make a return a later date after they've been refurbished. Oh, they're a large item to throw away, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're still pretty perfectly usable. So there's not a lot of work going on in this stand. There's still one section missing in here. That doesn't seem to be a high priority. I haven't, as far as I know, this stand is pretty well ready to go. They just haven't had a use for it just yet. Yeah, I guess they're just preparing for the, they're just preparing for the future, I think, when booster t uh, construction does ramp up. And we still haven't seen a ship transport stand yet of this 
type where they can just clip it onto a literally onto a SPMT. The story is the yeah, that would be cool to see. Um, I guess it's just not a priority for them right now, though. There's still no idea why they're modifying these platforms. It doesn't seem to have had a lot of work done this week. Uh, the, a new booster cap is making a bit of progress. And we seem to have something new going to be built here as well. Not sure what yet. But those have probably, a particular shape. That'll probably just be for another booster cap. Um, if you look under the one that's already being constructed, it's pretty much the same shape stands, pieces being used there. Oh, they are too. Very good. Well spotted, thanks. I remember there was ring sections for more than one of those new caps sitting over there. Yeah, there's some more rings. More than two. Yeah. yeah. Um, there needs to be another set of these. I'm not sure we spotted yet. That, that I'm sure it won't be long until they... Uh, yeah, I'm sure it won't be long until they do turn up. Okay, well, we're here. Have a quick look at the tower sections. Hasn't had much work done this week. Yeah, I think they're just waiting on the uh, the sheaves to be installed in the tower and the crown block. Yeah, I keep wondering where those sheaves are. Because obviously they can't completely, uh, they can't do the roof of the section nine on the right there until those sheaves are gone in. Um, so yeah, I think that's just what they're waiting on at the moment. Oh, there's an SPMT right there. Seem to be here there here at times. Uh, another thing's missing uh, was from the other side. The cap, the booster quick disconnect hood is gone from the uh, this from this area is because it's being installed. And yeah, we got a pretty good uh, good shot of that, which we'll obviously get to later on at the launch site. Um, and yeah, that has since. Since this flyover has actually been installed on the hood now. And tested. Yep. Just while we're here. Oh, I've got the wrong one. Hang on, I'll come back to that. <clears throat> one second. We've got some new pipes in here we're not sure of. We just spotted this week. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what those actually are, but there's uh, definitely something that caught my attention yesterday. There's the shot I was looking for. So there's some more work going on with this section this week, and I noticed the stairwell section, the stair section here and here, and there's a bit of work going on on this one over here as well. So a little tiny bit of work going on there. Oh, there's Mars. Yes. So the, uh, we've probably seen a combination of them just installing those last stair sections and possibly just verifying the connections for all the other staircase sections too before they uh, finally roll those sections down to Sanchez, which as of right now, we don't know when that's actually going to happen. So do we have any... Yeah, like there's room for them here to... It's a bit of a curiosity why they don't have them sitting here. They, they've got plenty of room here. They're not in the way of anything here. Makes you wonder why they're not here. I still kind of yeah, wait, I waiting for the other two from Florida to finally get moved over, and then they'll just do a parade of sections at one point, so they only have to close the road one long time. Now, wouldn't that be quite a sight to see all those tower sections just rolling down Highway 4? <laughs> That sounds like a good theory. Thanks, Nate. Okay, so oh, that's those pipes. Not sure what they're going to be for. I guess we'll find out sooner or later. Okay, over to the power area. We've noticed they have moved one power pack out. It's like just as just before the flyover, by the look of it. Not sure what that's about. Things uh, never like to stay in place for long when it comes to Starbase. They uh, often get moved around. <laughs> a 
Okay, over to the water farm here. I mean, the commodities farm. Still sm only small changes. I think a little bit of plumbing. Oh, we saw that last week. A little bit of plumbing was removed in here, I think, on that tank. I'll go over to the rocket garden. Oh, the, the scrap area here. Not lots changed here either. Or there, to be honest. Yeah, that's the interesting thing I noticed as well. But the uh, the panels that go underneath the ship engine in slow stands, they seem to be covering up all the uh, the perspex sheets in those. I'm just really curious to know why they keep why they're doing that. They they because I've noticed there's a lot more that's been added since the last flyover. I don't know. Is it maybe just protection for when they're assembling these stands, or is it something else going on there? Because you see, yeah, you see it with these by the container wall as well. They covered all of those over I wonder if it's mechanical protection from sparks or just from dust or maybe yeah okay on to the rocket garden and yeah we've got an interesting development over there in the rocket garden Okay, tell me all about it. So, as you know, obviously B4 was completely cut up recently. Um, and they moved the after B4 tier. And now, since the last flyover, we can see that they've actually started uninstalling all the engines. See, there's a little army of them there. Where they do to go next, we don't know. But I should imagine there's probably going to be some people that'll be probably wanting to buy an engine and having it on display in their house somewhere um i know some people want to see some of these go to museums as well i mean it's a possibility so i guess yeah i just gotta keep an eye out and see where these engines end up doesn't seem to be a lot of deconstruction inside so much but it looks like a lot of work's going on around the outside especially with the engines removal of course and that yeah, I mean, yeah. With it, Oh, with this transport stand, they can only remove the engines in order from one side. So, yeah, I should imagine once they got all the engines off, they'll then probably go to town, completely di uh, dismantling the aft section there. So they're not putting the engine straight in the trash can for now. So that's one sign they may get put somewhere else for display. <laughs> That's the thing with the engines as well. Um, it's obviously a bit more complex when it comes to scrapping those. You've obviously got to remove any ITAR protected parts on it and put them in, you know, discard those in the correct areas and then the rest of it can then just go in the normal scrap bins. It's, yeah, it's a bit more fiddly when it comes to those. And just to add a bit more confusion, we've, they've been working on Ship 26 again. Yeah, I still don't understand what that ship's purpose is these days. Um, just for a while, they just sat there, not actually being touched, and then they just seem to be working on it again. And the ship just really confuses me. I just, I just w wish SpaceX would just come out and just give us an answer to what why this thing still exists. It, it'll get real interesting when they start uncovering those lifting points that they put the stringers over that'll be when it really gets interesting oh god yeah that would uh that would really get the community going there wouldn't it if they did that i mean i guess it's still possible it could be a tanker type um ship test article or something to do with uh, fueling um uh, in the orbit I mean, one of the theories I've seen is that it'll be used to commission the flame trencher masses. It'll be used to make sure everything's working properly there, which is not a bad theory, but I still don't quite understand why there's so many stringers now installed on this thing. Or, yeah, external stringers. Uh, ship 32 hasn't had anything done to it for ages, and Ship, 20's, ship 20 must feel like it's on uh, borrowed time right now. Oh, yeah, I should imagine that ship's days are very much numbered. Um, 
And as for 32, I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on there. They don't... I mean, there's two... There's three half flaps now sitting near tent four. And they've been there for at least a couple of weeks now. But the two of them that, that would be used for 32, they still don't seem to have been moved inside the tent to have all the tiles installed on them. Because obviously those flaps, they come in untiled. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this ship. They just don't seem to be in any sort of hurry or any kind to finish it off. Because obviously it's still missing a raceway as well. Ship 32, yep. Well, hopefully they don't. I mean, if, if they get a successful, uh, the, sorry, the Indian Ocean hop, if they get a successful Indian Ocean hop and get the booster and ship to land as a um, virtual landing, they may even skip this article. Yeah, I know there's, there's, there's people in the community that don't agree with me whatsoever on that, but. I think 32 could very much be a ship that ends up being skipped um, if they achieve all the goals they want to achieve before they need to use 32 um, and, and if they want to get the V2 ships in action a lot sooner as well. Um, but I, I guess, mean, yeah, we'll just have to w wait and see what happens with it. I mean, they've done that before. They've skipped articles before. I mean, 20 is not a good example, I guess, but they did, like, skip 20. The reason I say 20 is not a good example because I don't know that it was ever supposed to fly between B4 and Ship 20. It might have been more for pathfinding for the actual uh, Stage 0, perhaps. Okay, we'll go over to the new garage parking lot. Car park. I call it a car park. <coughs> and then motoring along here, they've got the pile caps... Looks like we have an elevator shaft and stairwell going on over in the corners. Uh, they've finished concreting the main beam down the centre, which some suggest will be a large part of the structural strength of the whole building. And there's a bit of an anomaly where this side, we can see this massive big rebar section being built uh, above the trench, will, which will eventually get lowered into the trench below it's hard to see but there's an actually a trench below this under here and the other side doesn't have that over here doesn't have that long beam uh, hot sex hot ring hot stage section for booster 11 is still there stephanie i wonder if the reason that section right there has that extra beam I wonder if we're going to see that area be where our entrance and exit's at and they're having to reinforce that area because of the way the loads will be carried over those openings. Well, I think definitely have something to do with the loads carried by the building, for sure. I'm not sure why the, how the loads will vary, but what you said sounds uh, viable. Thank you. And now... Joe, any more donations and questions for Sanchez, please? Indeed, I want to thank Jim Cavett for gifting a membership as well as Pal9000 with some amazing support. 119.99 euro super chat saying thank oh, wow. you to the RGV team for all these amazing updates. Thank you so much, Pal9000. That is amazing support. Got a question awesome. from Tom8. Um, could the second or third transport stand for the upcoming boosters be for V2 and V3? The old one might not be usable for them. Well, if that's the case, the RLM won't work. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure they're all going to be forward compatible. It's a good question. Uh, as far as we can tell, they'll be forward compatible. I mean, if you think if these aren't forward compatible, perhaps the RLM isn't forward compatible either. That's a good question, though. I didn't have too many questions uh, regarding Sanchez. I do have a couple from Crane Man, but I'm going to save those for the launch site. Okay, Jake, we've missed anything here. I think we've pretty well covered everything. Yeah, I'd say we've uh, covered everything pretty well there, so we can, yeah, I think we can move on to the build site now. 
Okay, welcome to the build site. And we'll start with Mega Bay 2. So the stand they removed from this corner is now in the back corner, which is an interesting turn of events. Yeah, well, where you see those legs now, that, that is a pad that has, has been formed quite a while ago. Um, they did seem to cut some sections out of it recently. I'm not sure why. Um, but yeah, we still don't quite know exactly what was going on in that front left corner that's out of sight there. Because, um, yeah, obviously, as we know, there was a stand fu fully installed there that was used to install the engines on Ship 29. Um, but so then they perhaps, removed that. Perhaps they'll mirror, mirror, uh, mirror the Mega Bay 2 and have the three stands down, engine stands down the back and turntables at the front. Yeah, it does seem to me they may have decided against the original layout that they had planned and they may be changing it for like you said it may now be mirroring what we see in mega bay one so thanks for kiwi just trying to kiwi current kiwi trying to enhance these images to see inside we lose a bit of we see a bit of detail oh we do i think we do actually see the corner of the turntable there yeah in the top right corner so there is a turntable. So, so if that turntable is in the, the the back right corner, then that means that this layout is actually going to be different to Mega Bay One. We do know there's a turntable in there somewhere. That's it in the top right corner. Yeah, we know. You just see the edge of it. Yeah, because there was two outside. Now there's not two outside. Now, from the other side, we see uh, one of these photos. We can start to see they're putting the doorway pieces in here. So, yeah, basically, they'll just, what, what Stephanie was talking about, they're being installed along the doorway. Um, that'll basically seal everything up. So when the door's down, there's not really anything actually getting into the bay. Um, because at the moment there's still big gaps in the framework around the doorway. Okay, and on to the other two bays quickly. Uh, booster 14 is now fully, um, both its halves are fully stacked, sorry. So it's in two halves ready to be put together, except for one piece, I think. They can just see the methane tank in one of these photos. There. <clears throat> Hopefully we get lucky and they have the door open when they do finally do that final stack of B14. But, uh, uh, yeah, I guess we've got to see, wait to see what happens. Um, could end up being a case of one day it's in two halves with the door open and then the next day they open the door again and it's a full booster, which would be a neat little magic trick. Yep, don't like the idea of the door still. <laughs> I mean, it's good for production, obviously. Yeah, it's great for SpaceX, but uh, obviously it sucks for us not really being able to get as much of a good look in these bays anymore. So under Ship 29, while well, they've put the nose cone tiles back on, we can see a number of tiles still missing, especially on these weld seams. And, um, yeah, what we're seeing with these as well, where they're removing the tiles off the weld seams, um, they're then removing the blue adhesive left behind, and then they're going behind that then with grinders to rough up the surface. And I guess the next thing we'll probably expect to see is the red adhesive applied, and then the tiles reinstalled again, new tiles. Um, and that should mirror what they did with Ship 28, where they changed the adhesive out. In a lot of places um and i guess it's just there's other tiles as well that are just broken which need replacing um 
But yeah, that seems to be the case now. Is they they've gone off that blue adhesive and they've now gone under this red adhesive, which they seem to think works a lot better. So the, oh. I'm just going to quickly jump back here for a second. There was a stand over the last few weeks sitting in this area, a square white stand. It's now missing, and that's because it's the base. It's the base for a, a, a robot welding machine that was put into this Mega Bay 2 through the week. Yeah, so, so yeah, so some of you, if you were watching Robo 1 a few days ago, you would have seen um, a rectangular ship framework moving over to Mega Bay 2, and then on top of it, it had two separate welding robots. Um, and then later in the day, it was moved into Mega Bay 2. And that'll likely be for welding sections together on one of the turntables. Um, and the reason for two robots on that same stand is it's possible we may be seeing two welding passes done in one go, basically. Or there may be one robot for one turntable and another robot for another turntable. Although I'm not quite sure what the spacing is going to be like between the turntables. Um, we yeah we'd have to get pretty lucky to see fully into that side of the bay to see exactly where that welding robot station went the great wall of spacex bucky chica okay on to some star factory so the footings are going ahead and it looks like we've got footings over here so it looks like this building it's going to have a nice little wonky edge along here. And double footings here suggest a doorway here. So perhaps a ring storage section in here. But yeah, with some speculation that this building may attach to the Mega Bay 2, it don't, doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Yeah, and even if it did, there they wouldn't be a wide enough sections to pass ring sections from the factory into the bay. Um, if that's what anyone was thinking would happen there. it's uh, Yeah, so it looks like the factory's going to come right up to the bay, but not actually make contact with it. So there'll still be a little bit of room to drive vehicles, say, through here. and rings out over there. As far as the factory goes, it's moving ahead quite well. I think we've already saw these two doors in the last flyovers. The, power, the fascia wall is pretty well complete. There's a little tiny bit to add on top of this building to complete that fascia. I think we can see a doorway here as well. And they're right up against the old factory here. Which we can see better. On this front shot here. So there's still a little bit of concrete to be done along the old building. And I'm not sure if these are all doorways. I mean, there's a doorway there. It looks like they've allowed left open for movement through that doorway. Otherwise, these are perhaps more for wind uh, loading. And uh, probably well, the, uh, the thing you're seeing there as well is they're doubled up um, for bridge cranes. Because um, obviously with... With the bridge cone rails, it, they sit on pillars that are right up next to the actual structural pillars. Um, I don't know if you can quite see it probably from there. But yeah, I think that's mostly what you're seeing going on in that area. It's just extra pillars for the bridge cone rails. Um, there's Speaking of bridge cranes, there's bridge cranes here.
And there should be quite a few. I wouldn't think that's all the bridge cranes. There would be quite a few bridge cranes, possibly more than one bridge crane per uh, laneway even. A bit more concrete poured here. Uh, we've been seeing these strange puddings along here now. They're having the wall put up. So this is another different type of wall again than we've seen around the rest of the factory. I guess that's because it's the um, it's not actually a factory wall, it's sort of like the laneway. This still appears to be a laneway because it's a much bigger section. Yeah, it makes sense not to have the uh, the actual construction lanes coming right up to the edge at the front of the building like that. It's, uh, yeah, not too much of a surprise to see the lane continuing around. Around the back of the factory, you were talking before about aft flaps. There's still three there. One, two, three. So yeah, so with the flaps, as I was saying, the um, when they cut they arrive at Starbase, they normally come in with the pins already installed on them, um, but no tiles installed on them. So that's obviously something that, that needs to be done when they arrive at Starbase. Um, so yeah, so I'm surprised to see them still just sitting outside the ones that would be for 32. Um, because I expect to see them inside of that tent by now being tiles, but they're just they're not. So yeah, I don't know, I'm not really sure what's going on there. Okay, lots of work going on in this little area in here. Including some trench work over to this area. Now we can see they've exposed some of the original electrical conduit that came from Sanchez here. So speculations vary between moving this transformer set over to here. Um, but we just have to wait and see. There's a heap of new pipes here, and they seem to be insulated. Which is, yeah, quite odd to see insulated pipe and like that sitting right next to the factory. It's uh... Yeah, it's very puzzling. Oh, there you are. Yeah, so it seems like a smaller pipe insulation and an outer coat coating. Now, that's the best we can see in this photo. So, I mean, it could be that. I don't think we can see it even better in these photos. No, not really. That's a bit grainy. Yeah, I know that during show and tell last night, a lot of different ideas were thrown up about what those could be used for at Star Factory, and it really just no real good explanation kind of floated to the top. So it'll be interesting to see where they end up. If we can see when they end up, if they go inside, then we may never see what actually happens with them. True. Just while we're here, they still haven't hooked up these downpipes because they still haven't... Just go slowly here. They still haven't hooked up the main drainage into the wet area yet, so they may still be waiting for some kind of paperwork for that. Whatever's getting constructed here, they're making slow progress. There's a pad going on here. Still a lot of conduit work. By the amount of conduit in here, it seems like something fairly substantial is going to be put in this area. Not sure what yet. Hopefully, we think, maybe another um, another place where they make tiles. A kiln, pizza oven. <laughs> Okay, let's say that's about all for the actual factory, I think. That's all coming on nicely. Let's have a look around the front again. Yeah, so on the front of the factory, they got the majority of the cladding installed. Um, and they've now started installing the angled bits of cladding around where the window would be. Um, 
and you can't really see from well you can maybe see from this uh, aerial photo they do look to have actually installed most of the brackets now for the rest of the glass to be installed in that window um the other thing they've got to do though before they can install the rest of the glass is they've got to spray paint the framework white uh it's because yeah that's there yeah there's an example right there um that's what we've seen happening with the rest of the glass that was installed well it shouldn't take too long to get all that painted and ready to go for the glass for the rest of the glass but and yeah thought... it's it's quite a dominating uh site now from highway four this front of the building it's quite something to say the least <laughs> It's going to look really, really amazing once they get the glass installed and once they have lights on on the inside at night. I, I'm looking forward to seeing just how that looks. Uh, I think it's going to look incredible. Oh, God, yeah. It's, it's going to be uh, really nice. I still don't really understand why they angled that end like that near the bays. Um, but hopefully once they've completely covered the building, it'll, I don't know, make a bit more sense to me. It's kind of mirroring another SpaceX building, I guess, with the corner like that. That a Starlink building? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so obviously the Bastrop uh, Starlink facility, it's got a, a window quite similar to this design. Um, though the window for that building, the it actually meets up in the very corner of the, the, uh, the front left corner, whereas the window on this Star Factory building, it's... It, doesn't meet up in the very corner, the tops of the windows. Yeah, it comes a bit sh short here, the, the one, the yeah. Starlink building, it goes right to the very corner. Yeah, a much shallower angle on the um, Starlink building uh, window. I see, they're going to put more building on top of you, Jake. <laughs> no. Wouldn't that be quite something? <laughs> Okay, let's move over to the new office building. <clears throat> All that extra glass on this building so the ring watchers can get just a bit of a peek in there. Just a little bit of a tease. Yeah, that'd be nice. I'm sure they'll take anything they can get as far as that's concerned. I mean, we're going to see a few articles out here by the look of it. Actually, while we're right there, we can see they've scrapped one of the articles from last week. Yeah, so obviously there's yeah two payload bay, ship payload bay pathfinders sitting outside there, um, and they would have been used just to actually try and pathfind the, the new design. Plus, they would have been used to commission the new tooling inside of the factory as well. Um, and I'm imagining we'll see a lot more pathfinder sections coming out of that factory within the coming weeks. Um, where they've been, you know, doing more commissioning and pathfinding for other sections of the future ships. Because um, obviously we're now expecting to be going on to version of two of Starship, uh, which is sporting quite a few new changes. So, yeah, so that area at the back of the factory, I think that's going to be quite an interesting area to look at over the next few weeks. So this building's coming along nicely. They're continuing to add what an amazing little jigsaw puzzle. Like all these bits of steel would be numbered and these construction guys that all have to be looking for numbers and part A goes to part B, etc. on a very large scale. <clears throat> so a couple of small details, a little bit tricky to see sometimes, is there's a, a bit that sticks out over here, a counter balanced part and it goes around the corner here something that's a bit annoying for all you acd people is that this corner doesn't match the corner on the floor which is a bit curious and this section may have a curtain wall down here whereas the front here it won't have a curtain on the very front this should be uh free space under here it should this bit should just stick out Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see what this building looks like when it's finally finished. It's there's some rather peculiar things going on with this building. 
Well, there's a good shot of the angles not lining up. And we still have this triangle section here. It looks like it may be like an open section from the, the floor above the ground level. I guess that's floor two for you Americans. And then from there up, it'll be open like a cathedral ceiling up in here. And perhaps another one in this area as well. Can you imagine yeah, I have designing to laugh. I have oh, to laugh at someone's, um, someone's suggestion last night in the show and tell that they were just joking, but putting one of the... Uh, Putting ship twenty six right in the middle of this office as a as a feature, <laughs> like yeah, I couldn't help but laugh when they said that. Nice, that's a good idea. Imagine trying to design this on a CAD program. It's be so complicated. I even imagine trying to design it before CAD programs. Yeah, some of the other build, most of the other buildings in Starbase, I've been able to you know work out what what to expect as it's been building, but. This office building is, it's been confusing me quite a lot, the, the, the way they've been constructing it. And then you got this other wing up here they haven't moved past the foundations on. <laughs> this photo. Uh, yeah, they haven't started, they've, well, they've barely finished the um, the footings here. The, mm -hmm. so we should see some, like everything staged. Although that stuff could be staged to go further on top here. In fact, since last week, they are adding an extra height, aren't they? Perhaps. So there's still another, what are we going, five stories, aren't we? Yeah, I think, One, uh, two, yeah. Three, four. I think they've started, yeah, they've started adding the floor in uh, beams for the next floor up, I think. Cantilever, thank you. I knew I was saying it wrong. Cantilever. Okay. Um, uh, over here, they're putting concrete around this block, and I suspect it's to bring, so they can bring the grade up behind here and bring the concrete across and to stop a bit of erosion again. I uh, still don't think they have this block secured yet. Yeah, and for anyone wondering what's actually going on with that plot of land, I think the next court, uh, the next trial date is going to be sometime in June, from what oh, I can wow. remember. So, still a while yet until we're probably going to see any more progress made with SpaceX trying to acquire that plot of land. Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> Has some nice angles of the office building there. Obviously, they're spreading more of the iron out, ready for the concrete to be poured on top of throughout the building. So soon you might be able to see through all these levels like this. Okay, let's move over to the village. I was just expanding it quite a bit. It's uh, it's impressive how much this whole area has grown since SpaceX first uh, set up in Boca Chica. So it looks like that back wall is continuing nicely along. They can't make things straight, can they? They've always got to put little bends and kinks in it. <laughs> Got to follow those landlines. Gives a character. Okay, so the wall looks like it's going to come all the way through here. So will they go around this plot? Or continue straight through? I'm not sure yet. Not and this road here, they can't block up in this road as far as I've been told. Yeah, so that's still a state road. Um, can't remember the name of it now. But basically, yeah, they need to leave... At, that's it, San Martin Boulevard. Um, basically, they need to leave access at the end of that road onto the mud flats so they can't build anything in front of the end of that road. That's Basically, it's got to stay like that. 
So it looks like the wall may just end there and then start again, say, over here. Yeah, or here, probably. So. probably. And, yeah, there's a bit of um, untouched land between those two those two jetted out bits areas. That, yeah, that's not SpaceX's yet, I think, from what I can remember. That is still owned by someone else. They've now got a house on every block in here where there's not. There's still construction going on, getting ready for the rest of the houses. And it looks like they still have a few blocks they haven't secured. Over here at the solar farm, X solar farm. I think we saw that last week. There were lines painted. And it looks like they're going to leave a nice little garden around this building, perhaps. Although there's going to need to be some access here for the ramps. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a change this area, considering at one point SpaceX did actually say they were going to expand the solar farm and then they just went the total opposite direction in the end. This photo shows a better way, a little bit of dirt storage area here is getting less and less as they're moving dirt to the launch site, which we'll see in a minute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Oh, go on. I was going to say, uh, not too much change in this area. It's not as drastic a, as it has been over the over the past few years. All right, we'll go on with questions. Thanks, Joe, and donations for build site. All right, I want to thank a bunch of people for some awesome support. Thank you, friends. Sharpie for a nine ninety nine super chat. Choo choo! Excellent photos and commentary. Thank you. Sharpie. Um, thanks, Rocket Profit. 10 gifted memberships. That's awesome support. He's slinging some green and making some friends. We got a Crane Man PayPal donation of $25. Great show, RGV team. My donation for the next flight. Best regards. Yazada, thanks for a $10 super chat. Thanks for another great show, it says. Rocket Profit, $10. Hopping on the $10 train. John Depker just coming in with $10 Super Chat. Victoria just wants to say hi to everyone. Team hi, RGV. Go. Hi, hi, Victoria. Hi, I just hey, want to Victoria. say another thank you for amazing two-plus years of Starbase coverage. Thank you so much, John and Victoria. We appreciate y'all. I do have a Super Chat from 55 Chevy Guy Steve and a rude dog barking, so sorry about that. $20 super chat with a question. Once the large doors are in place, are there emergency exit doors for the workers in the high and mega bays? Yeah, there's quite a few doorways on those buildings. Um, with, yeah, with, with mega bay 2, there's actually, I think, six different exits on it, um, from what I've seen. Well, well, more than six, actually. There's at least four in the front of the building. Um, and then there's yeah, there's a couple around the sides, and then same on the other side as well. So yeah, they they got I think they got all the uh, the emergency exits covered with these bays. It's the same with Mega Bay One as well. There's quite a few doorways on it, little ones, and it's the same with High Bay as well. Very well, uh, David Alban asking, what is that funny looking ring in front of Mega Bay One? No, that's a fun one because there's there's a few rings in front of Mega Bay One. <laughs> um, so yeah, so four of those. See that pile there that Stephanie was just highlighting. That is just a pile of ring stiffeners that they've taken off the sections before moving them into the bay. And then the other four rings are just work stand. Um, they would have had the booster ring sections on them before moving into the bay. The rings for the bottom and rings for the top. And then, of course, you've got a, a load spreader sitting right there as well. That triangular, that three-pronged three object. 
Yeah, so what? All right. Uh, Question from C Breeze: Is it possible on the next flyover or ground shots to get a look at the hovercraft dock on Padre Island? Maybe hours of operation too. Thank you. All right. Let's see what uh, see what the flight team thinks about that. I do have a question from Crane Man. Why was the BQD door temporarily stored in the payload building after removing it from Sanchez? I don't think we really have a proper answer for that one. Um, no. Yeah, we're not really sure exactly what it was doing in that building, considering that's supposed to be the Starlink building. Unless they took it in Although, the up because it had been sitting outside. I have no idea. Yeah, it's yeah. Unfortunately, we can't really answer that one properly, as we only ever got that one glimpse of it, and then after that, it was the next time we saw it was at the launch site. Yep, all that matters. It is now connected to the BQD hood. That's all I got for this segment. I think we can move on to the launch site. I have a quick question. How's Victoria's little Starship project going? I think they're her and John are building a model of Starship they're going to launch as a model rocket. Okay, on to launch site. And yeah, we've got a pretty interesting development in the uh, where Orbital Pi B is due to go. They have now started filling in that little strip of wetland. Um, we haven't seen any actual notices being put out, but the fact that it's being filled in now pretty much suggests that they've got approval. So they can now do what they need to do in that area. Yep. And the WIC system we can see everywhere, except there's no WIC system in that area yet. And the cranes have been packed up, so perhaps they put in some kind of gravel or something in there to help drainage. We can see the WICs here Sticking out the ends here, or the manifold, the uh, the larger set of five pipes here to allow the wicks to drain out to the edges. And at this end, um, I've got a hang on. At this end, it looks like they're all going to be draining up to this end, and there'll be a drainage system around the outside here to remove water that's coming out of the wick system which should travel that way up to that end and then you can see this is on a slope to drain the water away and they're starting to build this up which will help with the hydrostatic force to help the wick system work yeah so basically they're just piling on a lots and lots of dirt just to try and squeeze the water out of the ground lots um, of i think vic yeah, I think Vic said, or someone else might have said it, I think as of sometime yesterday, it was about 700 trucks of dirt has been deposited in that area to try and put on as much weight as possible, to squeeze out as much water as possible, and as quickly as possible. Yeah, so that shouldn't take too long. Now, with the wick system that's in there, when they put piles in for the towers, they can just drill straight through the wick system, so that wick system will stay there. There was a wick system in this area as well under that original big large piece of dirt, that, a mound of dirt that was here in 2018, and then they leveled leveled that all out. So this could get even get built up to this level yet. Yeah, and I think it's supposed to, I suspect to take about, I think was it six months? for all the water to be squeezed out of that area on the new uh, to the left there. Although, you never know, SpaceX might add something else in there to try and speed that process up, um, which I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Because I'm sure they want to get that the construction of the next orbital pad underway as soon as they can. Perhaps like a large pile of dirt, for instance. Yeah. I don't know whether you touched on this last week. The uh, These are like temporary walls. They're using landscaping businesses sometimes to create barriers, a bit like this, where they can pile different sorts of soils 
into their little spots. I'm not sure what SpaceX are going to use it for exactly, but being staged here is a good chance it's going to be used somehow as support of the construction of the new launch site. Okay, moving along. Oh, now, this is a photo I was trying to bring up. Last week's photo here, we can see that they've folded these pipes over, so effectively blocking these off. So water can't drain this way. The water has to drain over to this far end on the left here of these long pipes and will drain into the trench down here, which they hadn't dug last week. Yeah, so essentially those black lines, they, they act as a, they give a capillary action. So obviously the water will come up out of the ground through the wicks and then it will want to follow along those black uh, black lines too. Obviously the new trenches are on the edge of the, uh, the, the ground there. And uh, it's in the other part. There's a excavator here with a jackhammer on it, breaking up the old concrete already in this section. I suspect that concrete break is going to get very, very busy in the very near future in this whole area. Yeah, I wonder how many more static fires we have at a test stand B. I'm thinking maybe one, possibly two. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, a good point. I mean, I don't actually know where the tower and all them will go for the next pad. Um, well, I think it'll go where they've been adding all these drain works. But I don't think they'll stop the static fire testing at suborbital pad B until they've got the static fire test pad online at Marcy's. Yeah. A comment in chat, Michelle Nichols saying, that car park only lasted one month. Yep, it was very temporary, wasn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of things in Starbase that are quite temporary at times. Yeah, there, there, there are puzzling decisions that are made at times, definitely. We think this is an electrical... I mean, it could be drainage, but it's more likely to be an electrical trench. They've actually dug and filled back in without making too much of a mess. And at the moment, they're putting, I call them starter bars, into the concrete to fill this section with concrete. And it seems to go to this, oh, we think, vault over here. This is a better photo. So another little mystery piece of concrete trench. Okay, moving along. Okay, onto this building. That's what I had planned here. So a bit of trench work here. Weird shaped trenching, but there's trenching nonetheless going on here. With rebar here that look like footings so there may be some kind of footing in here. You can see they're um they yeah they're running conduit there as well. Look if you look in the trench, it's bending around to the left there. So yeah, I guess they're just going to get that building connected up to the uh, the rest of the power in the launch site. I wonder why the uh, footings there. And some more concrete getting ready to put around the outside of it. Yeah, I know that there was the um, there was that comms part that used to be sat where they're working now. Um, it may come back again, uh, uh, you know, once they've done whatever they need to do there. Which, so I yeah, still haven't seen why this. I... Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. They <laughs> they covered half of it and then they, well, just stopped. <laughs> And that's more a protection layer rather than just paint on top. Yeah, so wood. in some ground photos, we have seen it is actually, it's like a, a fiberglass material, 
that they've been layering on top of that roof. Okay, on to the tank farm. Now, progress this week has been amazing. In fact, we're quietly confident that at least the nitrogen tanks are actually plumbed in fairly well. So you can see venting going on here, so there's a good chance there's actually commodities in those tanks. Yeah, so we've seen the venting coming from the first three tanks. Um, not sure about the fourth tank, but I, I should imagine it won't be too long until we do see that venting. Um, and of course, this nitrogen would be used for all the heat exchangers in the tank farm um, and any other little areas needed for. So they don't, they don't need, yeah. So, and of course, they don't really need nitrogen for cryo testing at the launch site anymore now. So, we'll go through those couple little points there. So, we can see that these two nitrogen lines over the back here one for the LOX uh, farm and one for the methane farm. And they're starting on the main liquid oxygen line here as well. So we just follow these nitrogen lines just for one second. I'll do this slowly, I promise. We come over here and the methane's nitrogen line is getting tied in as we speak into this nitrogen system in here and getting removed, or not getting removed, but it's, it looks like it's going to tie in to a T. So it looks like they can still use the old vertical tanks as well at this stage. So that's the uh, methane's nitrogen supply. And then the LOX over here, they've tied the LOX, the nitrogen line into the LOX farm over here as well. So that looks like that's plumbed in as well. And once again, we think that they can still use the old nitrogen tanks. And while we're here talking about getting cut in, this might not be the best photo in here. They've actually cut the main oxygen line. The main liquid oxygen line has been cut. And we think this is a T section, T piece down here that could go in there to allow the new LOX liquid oxygen line to T into the old system. So once again, they could use both the old farm and the new farm. Yeah, it is. Dare I say it, it is starting to look a lot more likely that they may have everything connected before IFT4. Um, whether they'll actually have everything commissioned before then and all the tanks fully filled for IT IFT4 remains to be seen. But yeah, they, they've made some pretty significant progress on this expansion. So as it stands right now, the um, orbital tank farm is not able to be used. This has to be finished before flight four because the main LOX line is cut. So there's no way to get LOX into the actual, um, over to stage zero anymore just for now until I put this T piece in and probably connect this LOX line, which is coming along. You know, this is always very complicated, but it's kind of unbelievable how complicated it's become. And uh, my hat's off to everyone that's able to follow this so well because this has not been one of those areas that I've I've been able to really keep up. Well, I personally give a big shout out to one of our Patreon members, AH, for um, helping at least me understand what's going on here. Look, we can see a T section here. This is where the locks and a plex line. So this is where I mean, this is where the nitrogen's coming in, and they've changed something in this area. I can't remember what it was exactly now. The They've added something in here. We, we thought to be able to take, because they don't need nitrogen to go through the pumps anymore, But there and there's a manual check valve here, but they still actually can let nitrogen go through to the pumps. I think Jake was saying earlier, we don't, they don't need to cry back the ship here anymore uh, or the boosters, so there's no real need for nitrogen to go through the pumps anymore. Sorry, Jake. And yeah, obviously... So yeah, and obviously with the you know adding these new tanks in, it's not just not just you know creating new storage. Uh, they probably 
created a more reliable system as well whilst installing these new tanks you know using lessons learned from the first orbital tank farm construction so yeah so like i say these new tanks will probably be yeah be a lot more reliable when being used and even in the interim another thing that's pointed out to me is the to backfill the nitrogen and locks tanks they need a high they need a pressure system from the fluids bunker which we follow this pipe which is amazing like like you just said mate it's amazing how people can do this and work out where all these things go but that pipe in particular makes its way up and over and around and around and up and over and around and back over and eventually comes back over to here and that is to backfill until this i'm oh, sorry i'm moving around so fast until i get all these vaporizers commissioned that's how they're going to backfill the tanks with the gases i guess that one's for nitrogen and the lock side will be backfilled with these this system right here i think is what they came up with but yeah very complicated lots of work and there's some more massive is it those ones massive yeah. uh, locks lines there yep Oh yeah, and the other small change you we can see in this photo as well is they're building up a new wall in front of that part of the tank farm. Um, I should imagine it'll look a lot like the the new wall down over the suborbital site, of the launch site. And I should imagine no. we'll see even more wall sections going up elsewhere when we get around to it around this launch site. I suspect so. So, so far, the locks line has got only to, where is it here? Locks is up to here so far. I think they put a new piece in this morning. Up at this end? I believe so. They were lifting something, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was another piece of the locks line. It was big. Cool. So this odd tank is now confirmed to be nitrogen as it's getting plumbed into the nitrogen lines there. So we can see here this tank is just for the LOX farm. This tank's just for the LOX farm. This tank can do either the LOX farm or the methane farm for nitrogen. And this tank is for the methane farm only. And we can see here where they're going to add the liquid nitrogen lines from down there up into here for each of these tanks. One, two, three. Hang on. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. I couldn't count then for a second. <laughs> There's lots of conduit work still happening in amongst all this area. It's quite complicated. We can still see a couple of the uh, vaporizers. It's a wonder these vaporizers are so close you'd think they'd get scratched or dented, but anyway. Moving around the other side of the tank farm, we can see they've added insulation to these uh, water tanks. And we can tell they're water tanks because they're plumbed into the old water tank lines. The old water lines. <coughs> and they've added plumbing to these vertical tanks. So that's all coming along nicely. Uh, back over in this photo, sorry, I'm jumping around on you. They've added some plumbing over the back here. There's two lines running along these pipe racks this week. And they start from over here. Also, we notice a lot of plumbing's been removed here, and that was plumbing that was for these cryo stations here when they're doing cryo testing here. So they removed some lines and added some more lines. And they just go to two spots along this tank one in here and one in here and this is the photo too we can see some more plumbing in between the tanks they can still see a vaporizer under there we believe those vaporizers are permanent <laughs> so 
So lots of work going on in the tank farm area. Now down here we can see they're finishing off the berm here, adding concrete. I'm going to finally cap that berm. Yeah, so the... Um... There was obviously there was originally plans to actually expect, ex, extend that boom over to the end of that new blast wall they got there. Um, but as we saw recently with the last Army Corps of Engineers update for this launch site, it looks like they gave up on trying to get permission to build on that bit of wetland there. Um, so now that's pretty much why we're seeing the end of that boom finally capped. Because they finally decided that that's as far as it's going to go. And of course, the end of the boom has been getting worn away by all the you know the various launches and the static fire tests. Um, so obviously with capping this off now, that should mitigate any more wearing away at the end of the boom. So they poured that concrete last week. and still can see a couple of pipes sticking out. I think last week we might have missed, but they added that lower footing during uh, uh, two weeks ago, and now they've added a heap of rebar and they're putting some formwork up to pour this bit of end cap of the concrete. It seems a little bit excessive, this scaffolding there, but I guess that's what they need. Yeah, it's certainly quite different from when they uh, poured concrete over the rest of the boom. Okay, let's move on to the tower. Oh, we're in good time. I mean, the launch, sorry, the launch, OLM. So one quick thing to note is they've added on the chopsticks, they've added the walkways back in. Hopefully secured with uh, better means this time. Yeah, we've um, been seeing a lot of welding going on over there and grinding. So I, I think they've doubled down this time with the attachment. <laughs> Yeah, we've seen that. that was quite... Go on. So that was obviously quite a sight to see during the last launch, just sections of walkway flying through the air. Um, hopefully, we don't see that again for the next launch. So here they've removed the old ram already. I promise we'll get to the OLM. They've removed the old ram here already and put it down on the ground here. Took us a minute to find that on the show and tell. And they've hooked the crane up to the new hydraulic actuator, which is now in place up on the chopstick arms. I'm really curious. And yeah, there was a. I was gonna say, I'm really, really curious that they'll replace both of them because this this actuator seems to have some new pipe work on it. Some of the smaller bits. Yeah, I'd yeah. like to think that they will replicate it on the other side um i do think it'd be odd adding a new piston on one side that's got extra hardware on it and then just leaving the other piston as it is so yeah i do think we'll see the other one replaced at some point and where the replacement is for the other one we don't know right now if it does exist that is that's why we're here more concrete just for change Uh, more concrete here, just for change, just ripping up random bits of concrete. Now onto the OLM. Here is the rest of the old uh, linkages, and perhaps some. Yeah. New yeah. So yeah, on those little pallets in the middle, I think those are the uh, the load pins um, that would be used for the linkages. So basically, they they like the normal pins that obviously connect the ends of the linkages, but they can also measure the loads experienced in those areas as well. So they'll go through these holes here. Yeah. And while we're on the ground, just over here, we see new linkages. Or at least one anyway. So yeah, um, so obviously the ones by the ones by the berms are the ones that they have removed. You can well you can tell just by how charred they look. Um <laughs> and obviously they'll probably end up joining the ones at Sanchez at some point where they'll then go on to be refurbished and then reused again at a later date. 
And this photo is a great photo to show the linkages here, the two of them being already installed. And thanks, I can only say a lot of these things I say because of the show and the great people we have in show and tell that spot, that, uh, spot all these things for us, including Jake and um, Nate here and BJ and quite a few other guys. Thank you very much. And we can also see some of the clamps perhaps here staged. I'm pretty sure we saw some clamps getting removed on uh, R2 camera. And these look like the new clamps staged to go back in. Though it's a bit hard to see in this image which clamps are actually removed. So possibly that one and that one and maybe one over here somewhere. And uh, yeah, so these things are being removed and replaced. It it seems to be something that we'll see with every launch until this part is completely overhauled. Um, it's the same with the hoses as well. They get they still seem to be getting damaged by each launch, but it'll be interesting to see what's changed with the next uh, the new design launch mounts for the you know for the future pads. And I shouldn't. I know it's a bit of a bold prediction, but. I do honestly think at a later date this entire OLM is going to be replaced by a new design. Uh, um, I agree until, with you. Yeah, and I think until then they're just going to keep nursing this one through each launch. Um, so basically guess... everything, you, everything you're seeing now is probably just going to keep happening until a new design comes along. I guess there's two trains of thought they could replace the whole OLM or just um, remove everything from the OLM because the base... The actual uh, skeleton of the OLM may be okay. They may just need to change all the mechanisms inside or they're just going to cut it right up and remove it completely and put a new one on top. Okay, the booster quick disconnect hood has been replaced now, only in the last sort of 12 hours. And we can see it down here. It's uh, different. We can see that it's different. So yeah, so the big change with this new door is the raised section on the front of it. That big, so yeah, that part by there. Um, and it's speculated that that's possibly to stop the front of the door wearing away as much as the old one did. And it's possibly there to stop any warping from occurring as well. Because um, that may be something that they, they experienced with the last door, warping of the metal. Um, and it may have also contributed to gases getting un underneath the door and into the hood during launches. Yeah. So yes, I, I guess we'll see how this door holds up to the next few launches. Okay. Of course, that, oh, go door on, mate. In place, that door is in place now, if anybody's wondering. Yes, it's been added on, it's been put on and tested. It's been raised right. and lowered. Okay, Jake and Nate, have we covered everything here? We can ask for questions now. Yeah, I think we're, uh, I think we covered all bases there. So, yeah, you can... Joe, you can crack on with the donations on any questions you got. All right. I want to thank Dave Avery for gifting five memberships as well as Smurf Trooper for gifting a membership, and Stan J for gifting five. Much appreciated for that support. Enjoy your memberships, everyone. Crane Man did have a couple of questions I'm going to combine from earlier in the show. Is the SQD arm actuator still needing to be modified or exchanged? And could they retract the SQD a few seconds earlier to clear the SQD arm from the rocket exhaust? Uh... I don't know about the first question, Jake. Definitely, I, I don't know if we have um, knowing that until they do it. It's one of those moments that if we see them working on a cylinder that's the right size, then we'll know. And beyond that, it's just guessing. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there was that, that the piston sat outside the ground fabrication building um, at San Jones for a long time. I mean, we, we did obviously originally think that that would be used for this QD arm as a replacement to help it move faster at launch. Um, obviously, that didn't happen in the end. I think the QD arm is holding up okay to, uh, to the launches. Um, the inside of the arm, the inside face of it, is getting charred by launches, but 
I don't think moving the arm fa- away fast is going to change that at all. I think that's just going to keep happening because the proximity to the launch, uh, the, the the rocket lifting off is always going to be the same. Um, and there was, I think, it was Ryan Hansen, I think, mentioned it the other day that they do want to possibly be careful about how fast they retract this arm. Because um, if you retract it too fast, you, it's possible you might start getting warping of sections in the middle of the tower. Um, and you also need to be able to... I know this is going to sound crazy, but you also need to make sure that the arm doesn't just snap off the tower if it moves too fast. I think that is... I, you know, I think that is a genuine concern as well. Um, yeah, there's a so lot of the time, and leverage. Yeah, so, so I think for the time being, it's going to stay as it is. Um, yeah, I don't think there's going to be any change there just yet. I think it's it may like, be a lot like the OLM in that once they get the new tower up and designed, then we may see this arm change slightly. That's one of the bits back at... Uh, at uh, the cape they've yet to work on the tip they're working on the arm but the tip that goes from the end of the arm to the ship it's still bare they haven't done anything to it and so there's probably going to be some design changes there and just on that question i guess we don't really expect this arm to be lifted on this tower yet until they do the upgrades perhaps like for version two or three may need i think version two might be okay version three i think is going to need a higher SQD, perhaps. Um. Well, no, that's a, that's the interesting thing with V2, because um, obviously the boosters do to get slightly taller as well. So if they, if if V2 boosters debut at the same time as the V2 ships, then this current the the, the QD arm in this photo now, they will have to lift that QD unit up higher again, if it's even possible to actually do that without fighting too much into the uh, the stability. Um, so and, yeah, I think on the other t- on the future towers, they are going to have to move that arm up a bit higher, I think, if the and, uh, boosters are now getting taller as well. Yeah, and, and as other people were asking earlier, way earlier, about Marvin, this is one example of why you want Marvin around. Yeah. Yeah, especially this high up. Uh, Jeff A was coming in, perhaps they just need to move it earlier rather than faster even as well, which I thought, which I tend to agree with. They seem to be wanting to keep the ship conditioned as long as they can. I mean, up to, you know, that moment for some reason, because I was of, of that opinion also is why don't you pull it and just start its rotation away just a bit quicker. But they, through three launches, they haven't changed the timing. I mean, only a second or two, you'd think it'd make a huge difference. Yep. Okay, next question, Joe, please. Missing Tools asking, whatever happened to the stockpile of Ready Duct? <laughs> That's a good that, question. Well, I do actually know what that is. Um, they did actually, they used some of it when they were expanding the three-phase power to the launch site. But the rest of it, is actually at, um, I can't remember exactly where it is. It's somewhere in, closer to the town of Brown, Brownsville, where they, sorry, the city of Brownsville. There's another storage lot there that SpaceX used. They've got a whole warehouse, and it is actually sitting outside of that warehouse. So it's, SpaceX are still holding on to it, um, but no idea when it's going to be used. <laughs> so they use some, where do they use it up in this area, did they, Jack? Um, I don't know about the launch site, but at the build site, they used it where at the entrances, um, just you know, for extra structural soundness and where vehicles and obviously boosters and ships will be driving over. Uh, that's yeah, right. I think where they, they used here, yeah. like, and where they cut uh, here, maybe. Yeah, and even up there at, across here at Sanchez and here. I think so, yeah. Good question, thank you. So yeah, basically some of it was used and the rest of it was sent to that warehouse uh, in the city. All right. Starsoon, how long does the wick draining process take to complete? Um, So they say six months um, at least, I think. 
but that's just with the normal pile in the dirt on top. Um, SpaceX may try and do something to help accelerate that process, which I know. Oh, well, I wouldn't be surprised if they do, because like, like I said earlier, they do want this. Uh, they will want this second orbital pad online sooner rather than later. So they could try a few other things to get that going quicker. I think the product advertised instead of taking a year or so, it takes a hundred days. I think they're roughly a hundred days. That sounds right. I believe I heard a hundred days also. Okay, excellent. Sea Breeze with a question. Curious if Tank Farm Two would benefit from using single Kennedy Space Center style round LNG tank versus multiple hot dog type with wall. Oh yeah, I think they'll go for something vertical. But I don't think they'll go spherical storage tanks. Like I think that's what that person was mentioning. I think they'll be built like the new LOX tank. That's a LC thirty nine A. Um, well, at least that's what I'm hoping to see. With the obviously with the horizontal storage tanks, they take up a lot more space. You know, space footprint wise. So I think yeah, they'll go vertical storage again for this other pad, but the the, the much bigger vertical tanks. I mean, technically, uh, what you're saying is correct, and perhaps those, like the Lux tank at um, 39X, pad at uh, Kennedy. I mean, you could. There's plenty of room to literally just mirror what's here, just mirror it straight into here. Everything that's here will fit in there. So they could use hot dogs, but yeah, I'm agreeing with Jake here. I would like them to see the the um, like the Lux tank at um, 39A put here i guess but once again we can only speculate those things and they're good questions okay more questions joe we can just about wrap up all right henry blackburn will we see a landing pad at starbase for testing out starship for landing on the moon or mars probably not in the near mean, future i'll go on it's possible. I mean, obviously, you know, the SpaceX do do own a lot more land there that they just can't build on yet. But they may get permission in the future to actually put a landing pad further back away from the road there. Um, yeah, it's a possibility. We missed Jake. We missed this one bit of concrete they poured that you noticed through the show and tell. I replaced this one uh, over the last couple of weeks. Now they've replaced this bit of concrete for unknown reasons. I'm not sure why they had to replace these two spots. Their quota. It's just for their quota for digging up concrete and replacing it, perhaps. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, spa SpaceX only rinse concrete. It's never permanent. Um, yeah. So <laughs> Tony Ogg coming in with a last minute question um, back towards the bill site related. Has anyone tracked rolls of steel disappearing into the star factory? Well, we haven't actually seen starship eggs for a little while now. They used to be in that spot. We used to be able to see them just on the other side of this building down in here, but we haven't seen anything. I mean, around the back of the factory here now, this photo, they can um, come into the back of the factory here. And they have had this loading bay here, so perhaps some of the, uh, I'm calling them starship eggs, the rolls of stainless perhaps come in through here now, and we haven't actually seen them for a long time. All right, Mike, uh, Mike we, the question Q is empty. We could probably get to wrapping it up here. All right, well, I'll sign up and then let Jake and Nate and then Joe sign up. So thank everyone for joining us again today. Um, I enjoy doing these live streams. I feel blessed that I get to do them. So thank you all for listening to us all. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. And thanks to Emlyn for producing it, of course. Thank you. Oh, and Jen. Thanks, Jen, for doing the scheduling. Bye. Yeah, it's been a, another fun stream. It's obviously, as you've seen, we've been... Quite a lot of changes yet again since the last flyover, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to see 
what's going to happen between this flyover and the next one. Um, and yeah, we hope to see you again for another stream in the future. Um, with that, I'll pass it over to Nick. Yeah, another great stream. Uh, so much has changed and it's always fun to talk about and learn about the, the changes that have taken place. Thanks again to everybody that uh, helped make the stream possible, everybody that watched. And so now, Joe, take it away. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Team RGB, for getting these awesome images. Thanks, YouTube chat, for an awesome chat and your extremely generous donations and gifts. We appreciate you all continuing to support RGB and bringing us these flights. Thanks, Emlyn, for turning the knobs and pushing the buttons and the rest of the team in the background that's handling all the QC and everything that takes place every week here. Thank you all. Most engines cut off. Hot staging confirmed. Love you. Bye.